Hi, welcome to Z Gadget Review. Yesterday we spoke about Cyberpunk 2077 and the huge patch that they released, patch 1.2, which was supposed to fix all these things in the game, a game that clearly based on the patch alone was a game that wasn't ready to come out. For the video, you can go here or in the description section. Well, today CD Projekt Red, the studio responsible for games like The Witcher and Cyberpunk, put out a video explaining their new roadmap on how the studio is going to work and what their plans are with their franchises. They had a lot of information in it that will affect Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher going forward. So let's break it down and talk about the different things that they addressed. So the first thing that they talked about is something that they're calling Red 2.0. This is supposed to make it so they can work on parallel AAA games instead of working on AAA games one at a time as they did before. The other thing that Red 2.0 is supposed to do is centralize the Red engine, which is the engine that the studio uses to make games. They are going to be using the Red Engine to work on both games at the same time. In this case, it's going to be The Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077. Centralizing the Red Engine is going to help the studio focus on two franchises at the same time. Now, of course, with this announcement, they make it clear that the franchises that they are going to be focusing on are The Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077. They didn't talk about any other projects. These two franchises are going to be the bread and butter for CD Projekt Red for the foreseeable future. Now we're all aware of how huge the Witcher franchise has been for CD Projekt Red and how important that franchise has been for CD Projekt Red. They explained how the games increasingly got more popular as the franchise grew saying that The Witcher 3 was the most popular of the three games. This not only sold 50 million copies, but it also brought other revenue streams as comic books, toys, the TV show that they have going on. So what they're saying is that they are going to follow the same path with Cyberpunk 2077. And one of the things that they're going to be changing is going to be how they communicate and market their games. Of course, this is all because of Cyberpunk 2077. As we know, Cyberpunk 2077 was teased a few years ago, then the development came in, and then the PR campaign and the marketing for the game was just crazy with information and promises that clearly was never delivered. So one of the promises they're making is that marketing and PR campaigns will start closer to the actual launch. However, new projects might still be teased early on. When they were talking about this in the video, what they said is that they will, of course, put out some teasers and stuff like that. So people know what they're working on and kind of, you know, get you prepared for the game. But that these marketing and PR campaigns are going to be released closer to when the game is going to be released. So instead of talking to us about a game for three or four years until the game comes out, they probably do it between a year to six months, kind of like other studios do. I mean, Call of Duty really doesn't start talking about Call of Duty until six months, nine months before release. And that's enough time to kind of give you an idea of what the game's going to be. And of course, as the game gets closer to release, they, they pump you up with more marketing and, and trailers and interviews and blah, blah, blah. Same thing with Battlefield. And I think what the approach is going to be for City Project Red going forward is going to be that. Let us know something about the game little by little, a year, nine months, and then a six-month run to the game is going to be chock full with information. Game communication will focus on more polished footage and demos. Moreover, showcases will be conducted on all platforms. One of the big issues with Cyberpunk 2077 was that the studio hid the fact that the game did not work on last-gen consoles. Everything that we saw was on a PC. All the footage, all the demos, everything came from a PC, which was misrepresentative from what the game was actually going to look like and how the game was going to run when it came to consoles. And this is going to be their way of fixing it. So going forward, whenever they showcase a game, it's going to be played on every single platform the game is going to come out. So people get a realistic idea of what the game is going to look like. 
So hopefully, fingers crossed, no more empty promises, no more lies from Siri Project Red. They gave us a roadmap update for 2021 for their two franchises. Again, one more time, proving that these two franchises are going to be the bread and butter for Siri Project Red. For Cyberpunk 2077, we have patches and updates continuing. They're going to continue patching and updating the game, free DLCs, and next gen update. Now, if you look at the free DLCs, they have that one there that says, and if you read below, it says one DLC, small additional content, which means that we're not going to get a big amount of expansion for this game. Now, there are some leaks out there of what the DLC might be, and it doesn't sound like DLC that is going to make people run and get the game. It seems, sounds mostly cosmetic and small side missions. So I don't think there's going to be more added to this story. And then the next gen update, which is something that everybody's expecting. For the next gen update, they did say that it's probably not going to happen until the second half of, of 2021. The other thing that they address about Cyberpunk 2077 is that these patches and updates are going to be constant and that the DLC in the next gen update isn't going to happen until the game runs like the way they wanted to run it. So it is feasible that the next gen update will probably get pushed to next year. Again, not 100%, but if they're trying to fix a game that just had this gigantic laundry list of fixes and people are still saying that the game isn't running perfectly, then that means that they're going to continue working and patching the game. And then that is going to be their 100% focus until the game runs the way they want it to run. In other news, we have The Witcher, which is going to have a mobile game, which is called The Witcher Mon Monster Slayer. And uh, from the little video that they showed, it looks like it's going to be a game that kind of runs like, uh, like the Pokemon game where you go out and trap Pokemons. But in this case, you're going to go out and trap monsters. There's going to be a Witcher 3 next-gen update. So... We are going to get a Witcher 3 for the Xbox Series X, PS5. All right, so after that, they they talked about the build-out. So how they're going to build the Witcher and Cyberpunk franchises. And this is something that, as I said earlier, is something that they're going to be focusing on making bigger. So the Witcher, of course, as we know, has expanded into a TV show, different merchandise, a mobile game, and all that. What they said is they're planning on building out their other franchise, being Cyberpunk 2077, into a similar path. They talked about that they had announced a partnership with Netflix to make an anime show out of Cyberpunk 2077. That's all they said about that. But they had announced that last year before the game came out or around the time the game came out. Um, they say that they're obviously going to continue uh, mer creating merchandise for, for the game, which, of course, why wouldn't you? And also, they're probably going to make some comics about Cyberpunk 2077. So if you love the Cyberpunk 2077 world, there's plenty of content coming your way to satisfy that crave. The other thing that they spoke about was how the two different franchises differ from each other and how it was also an evolution within the games that they work on. So they talked about Cyberpunk 2077 being an RPG with action and shooter elements, and The Witcher, while The Witcher 3 being an RPG action elements, and The Witcher Enhanced Edition is going to be pure RPG. Now here's uh, one of the wheels. This is the one for Cyberpunk 2077. And then um, they tout that 30 million games sold at launch. And then we have the online portion of their plan. So they said that we're going to add online multiplayer portions to the games as it makes sense, whatever that means. What they also stress is that they weren't going to stop with the main single player portion of their games. So technically what they're telling us is we're going to be a new Call of Duty, right? Single portion of the game with the story, multiplayer, portion of the game with multiplayer elements, whatever that might entail, obviously depending on the game. They, obviously that's, you know, a thing that other developers have done. And developers, every time that they have gone multiplayer, online multiplayer, it's always been uh, money driven because there's so much money to make on an online game. There was a time where 
They said there were going to be microtransactions in Cyberpunk 2077. Eventually, CD Projekt Red walked that back and they said they weren't going to do it. But now that they're moving towards that multiplayer portion of uh, games, it's kind of weird that they wouldn't put microtransactions. I'm sure they're probably going to have some small cosmetic microtransactions like most games have nowadays. But it's also a concern where... Yes, they're committing that they're going to have the single-player portion of the game. But how do we know that, that it's going to be as rich as the single-player games that we have gotten so far? So in 2077, with all the issues that it had, had a pretty good single-player campaign. It was enjoyable. It, yes, it was a little repetitive and stuff. But for the most part, it was a pretty good game. By doing this online stuff, I feel that they could kind of leave that first-person part of the game behind and not make it as full-fledged as it otherwise could be and kind of being like we gave you a single player mission don't bother us we did what we promised kind of thing right hopefully they won't do this but the appeal of making money is too big and we have seen what's our, what CD Projekt Red will do in order to make money with the disaster that is Cyberpunk 2077 and then when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077 online multiplayer portion of the game, this is what they had to say. Previously, we hinted that our next AAA would be a multiplayer cyberpunk game, but we have decided to reconsider this plan, given our new, more systematic and agile approach. So they didn't really say that Cyberpunk 2077 online multiplayer portion has been cancelled, but when you say that you have reconsidered doing something, and then you know, talk about what your reconsideration has been, become that to me means that you're done that you're not going to put a multiplayer portion on the game not only that but there's nothing on your roadmap that really says that you're going to be doing that so at this point i consider any cyberpunk 2077 multi online multiplayer talk to be dead to be done it's not going to happen to me sounds like with this roadmap that they are going to make the best they can do with this game during 2021. If for some reason the next-gen upgrade gets pushed to 2022, then push that next-gen upgrade. But besides that, that they are done with Cyberpunk 2077 for now. Because as we know, they're clearly going, we're clearly going to have other Cyberpunk 2077 games coming at some point. One big thing about them in this whole thing was that they weren't only going to focus on the game, so they were also going to focus on their employees because for some reason it didn't matter before until they were called out by Bloomberg on it. Now, because they have been shamed, I guess, they need to focus on the people that make their games. Probably should have done that from the beginning, though. So what do you think about the changes that they are making? Do you think that they will remain focused on great single player experience or they're going to fall by the wayside and they're going to become primarily multiplayer experiences? How do you feel about Cyberpunk 2077 losing a bunch of things pretty much and them saying, hey, this is what we're doing and no more? Let me know in the comment section. That's it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.